scarecrow stoops to filching the very crops it is its duty to guard. One wonders what has happened to the world. One does indeed. Still, there may be more to this than meets the eye. One must wait and see. Rooney! Rooney! Was you wanting something, Mr. Richards? Yeah. Where'd you put that sheep dip, Rooney? What sheep dip's up, Mr. Richards? You know what sheep dip? The drum of sheep dip concentrator I asked you to get out half an hour ago. Oh, that sheep dip. I'm just on my way to fetch it. Yeah, we'll get a move on. Just because you're a casual labourer doesn't mean to say you can be so downright blooming casual. How much longer do you reckon you'll be, Bernie? Oh, not long now, boss. Tree's bringing the rest over on the track. Yeah, well, as long as he doesn't take all day. <laughs> I'll be back for more of you that place later. Rooney! Rooney! Here I am, Your Honour. I can see where you are, Rooney. It's not your carcass I want to feast my eyes on. Where's my flaming cheek dip? It's over. I fetched it out and put it down there myself, Your Honour. Well, it's not there now, Rooney. Somebody's pinched it. Now, listen. Do us both a favour, Rooney. Get your act together. Fetch me a drummer sheep dip now! Yes, sir, right away, sir. Pinched it. What sort of idiot would want to pinch a drummer sheep dip? For us. It ain't the bestest sheep to dip I've ever had, and turn around it ain't the worstest neither. <laughs> now then, what we got here? Parsnips, carrots, beetroot, <laughs> onions, <laughs> oh, oh, hey. Chinese turnip. <laughs> what is something else? They put them down that place. Aha, aha, there you is. What's happening? Yeah, damn bum swizzle that play box. Let go of my hand. <laughs> Happy flock polluted. That's handy. Dang stupid apples. You should be on apple trees. Yeah, if you was on apple trees, old Wurzel wouldn't have to clamber up a ladder to get at you. Dang ow! Whoa! Ah! All right, so apple. I'm coming to get you. Bring me up a dog, Tucker. What do you think you're doing? Me, uh, I was making up for this side. That's what I'm doing, see? You half wit. <laughs> Those are my prize Cox's oranges. They ain't oranges. They're apples. Get up. <laughs> Come back here. I'll give you something to think about. I've already got something to think about. I'm thinking about that stick you're holding in your hand. Come on, get out of the way, you girls. Come on. Out of the way. Move, move, move. Yow. Go on, then. Clear off. But if I ever catch you back here again, I'll give you what for. What for? What for? What for? Bah! Bah! Bah, Wellington Boots. There are more sheep in New Zealand than there is rooks in Ten Acre Field. Yes, Virgil, and to what particular honour do we owe your presence here this morning? If you please, Your Honour, one of me hands has dropped off. It does not please me at all, Wurzel. Dropped off, you say? 
Uh, that's right, Mr. Cromancer. Dropped right off at the wrist while I was out at work. And there were this great crow you call ability. A sweeping and a diving down at them poor little sheep's is fit to bust. So I was waving my arms up and down and slapping my hands, and you never believe what yes, happened. It's all right, all right, Wurzel. That's more than sufficient. Now, did you bring the missing hand along with you? Oh, yes, indeed, Your Majesticness. Where do you suppose this label came from, Wurzel? Label, Your Detectiveness? Label, Wurzel. From Richard's Orchards. All right, I know where it come from, Mr. Cromancer. And there's some little birdie perched it there when I weren't looking. <laughs> Cheeky things, them sparrows. There. I've fitted your new mitten, Wurzel. How does it feel? Very empty, you're making menmanship. My, my, my. That's a rare old music box thing you got there, Mr. Cromancer. Pay attention, Wurzel. How's the head? <laughs> Particularly agile, your surgical ship. Yeah. And a nice new glove to go with it, no? Yeah, you know, I reckon that a scarecrow could do a rare bit of crow scaring if he had one of them music box things to keep him company in his lonely field. Very probably, Wurzel. But we're not going to find that out, are we? No. Come along. We've both of us got work to do. That we have, Your Magnificence. Very important work and all. Exactly. You must get back to your crow scaring, and I must get your new cousin delivered to Farmer Coherry out in Pewaka Waka. But ain't you going to play one more tune on that there music box thing of yours, Mr. Cromancer, before you go? No, Wurzel. You've wasted enough of my time this morning as it is. Now, off you go. Uh, but we're not even half a tune, your musicality. Wurzel! <laughs> Toot and bed, Mr. Cromancer. <laughs> oh, my, 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 will you look at that? All fixed up and good as new, eh? <laughs> to be on the safe side. I should put it under lock and key. No, he wouldn't dare. <laughs> Wouldn't do this under ordinary circumstances, Mr. Cromancer. But I have to borrow it, you see, because I need it for very special purpose. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, that's too. Begging your pardon, Your Magnificence, but I knows it weren't a right, proper, and seemly thing to pinch. But, uh, excuse me, uh, to borrow uh, the other Magnificence's music box machine, uh, and nor his weedy thing. But, but I had to do it, Your Worldliness, or it wouldn't have been a, a right, proper, and, and splendid revelation neither. We guessed that it was you. Hey, that's the Cromans' gramophone. He's nicked. Borrowed, Mr. Clever Cogs. Borrowed. What is it, Wizzle? Is it going to be a party? That's for me to know. And you, Titchy Nosy Parkers, to find out. I bet it's going to be a birthday party. Here's a birthday every month. Well, it ain't going to be a birthday party, is it there? When I doesn't have a birthday every month, I don't have as many as that. I's in once a fortnight, no more and no less. And that's because I's a scarecrow. And scarecrows does have more than humans. And that's because Scarecrow's arms and legs and heads and that gets born at different time. Well, if it isn't a birthday party, why have you hung up all these decorations? Because it's a birthday celebration, that's why. You mean celebration. Well, that's what I said, didn't I? Celebration. Anyway, it ain't a party. It's going to be tea dance. What? A tea dance? Yeah, a slice of cake and a cup of tea dance. And all my friends will be there, because on account of it being my birthday, see? And all the pretty ladies will be fighting over who's going to be my partner. <laughs> and they'll all bring me prezzies. All? All who? Don't ask me. There's nobody here but him and us. Yeah, and there'll be nobody here except me in half a minute. So you three can push off. Anyway, tea dances ain't for titches. Titches is too small to dance with. 
So go on, buzz off. Don't worry, we're going. We wouldn't want to come to your silly tea dance anyway. Not to eat dirty, smelly vegetables. Or drink sheep dip. We'll have our own party with real cream cakes and custard tarts. Come on, Ronan, we'll have a picnic. Yeah, hang on a minute. Did you say real cream cakes and custard tarts? Tart, 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 tart? Yes. Well, uh, I does dance with Titchy sometimes. There's a special dance that I made up for an occasion just like this. It's called uh, Get Down On Your Knees, Excuse Me, especially for Titchy. I'll show you. Yeah, da 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 da. Yeah, da yeah, da 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 all I need now is for Aunt Sally to come knocking at that door to make this the bestest tea dance in the old wild world. Come in, Aunt Sally. Your handsome intended awaits you. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> well, sure. I've borrowed your honour. Uh, borrowed it just for the afternoon, as soon as I was a special occasion. Special occasion or not, this is coming home with me. Oh, but it's for me birthday celebrations, your pomposity. I mean, what's the good of having birthday celebrations if there ain't no music? It's like having tea without cake. But you've already had two birthday parties this month. And that's why I'm having another one, Your Honour, to make it an even number. And who do you think will be coming to this party of yours? Eh? Well, all my friends. Friends? Who, for instance? Parsnip Franz. You know very well I had to put him down last summer when his head burst into flower. Mushikumira. Perished in the black September fungoid blight. Well, what about my old friend Soggy Boggett? Soggy Boggett is 12,000 miles away in the old country. Who oh, is he? Is that very far you're rolling it? Well, if you took all the scarecrow poles in the world, and laid them end to end, it would not cover half the distance. Certainly it is too far to come for a tea dance. But it's always me, Aunt Sally. Why would a lady of her quality want to come and eat sheep dip and dirty potatoes? Because there's new potatoes, extra tasty. There ain't nothing so good as new potatoes and sheep's and dip sauce. Anyway, she'll have to come. She's my intended. I hate to say this, Wurzel. But I think you could be in for a big disappointment. How's that, your despondency? I don't believe anyone will be coming to your party. Why not, your holiness? Well, to put it bluntly, Wurzel, you're not the most popular person hereabouts. Popular? I was very popular, Mr. Cromack. Oh, Wurzel's got more popular than he knows what to do with. But you have no friends, Wurzel. I have two. No genuine friends. To have genuine friends, one must be kind, generous, thoughtful, and honest. Well, I is all of those things, your magnificent. So, Wurzel, you are not. You are mean, selfish, thoughtless, and dishonest. And you are also very dirty. And that is why you have no friends, and that is why no one will come to your party. However far be it from me to put a damper on your birthday festivities. I will let you keep the gramophone for tonight, but you must promise me to look after my records. Oh, I will, Mr. Cromant, so you can rely on me. I can't rely on you for anything, Wurzel Gummidge, as you very well know. Just be sure to return my gramophone in the morning. So old Wurzel ain't got no friends, eh? I'd known it was going to end up like this. I'd have worn me miserable head if I had one. What are you staring at? Nothing. 
Yes, you are. No, we're not. Yes, you are. You've been spying on me. You've been whispering and sniggering at the poor old Wurzel behind his back. No, we haven't. Yes, you have. You've been making fun of me because no one's turned up to me tea dog. Tough cheese. We would have come, but we weren't invited. You yeah, listen, I can't have you been so titchy. But seeing as how you're both here, you may as well come in and join the fun. What fun? Doesn't look like much fun to me. Well, that's where you're wrong, see? You can have all the fun you like at a tea dance. Here, here, you see what I got here? Look at this. Christmas cake. Christmas was seven months ago. What's that green stuff on top of it? I think. No, it's not. It's mould. Green mould. That's right. Green mould icing. Nice and furry. Sticks to your teeth. But the best thing of all is this here music box thing. <laughs> you teachers have a listen to this. It's not supposed to sound like that. I'll give it a bit of a push. <laughs> That's not how you do it. You've got to lift it up like this. Let's dance. I can't dance. I haven't got my dancing head on. You don't need a dancing head. Come on. expected to see you for a bit. I trust you're treating my gramophone properly. Oh, yes, your generosity. I, I was just warming it up with a little bit of a birthday tea dance. When I... Well, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, now, Wurzel, about your birthday. On reflection, I feel I've been a bit hard on you. As a gesture of goodwill, I've brought you a present. A present? For me? Did you hear that, did you? Oh, Wurzel's getting a birthday present after all. Mr. Crowman, it's a little birdie. I, I'll just, I'll just pop him into my straw, so he can get his berries. What is it? A shining cookie? I would have liked to have given you a robin, but they don't live in this part of the world. However, I'm sure you'll like that little shining cuckoo, and it'll keep the insects out of your straw. I've noticed a colony of rather unpleasant black beetles has taken a hold in your stuffing. <laughs> a little shiny cuckoo to keep the creepy crawlers out of me in it. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Crowman. So I reckon this here birthday present is the finest birthday present I've ever had. Here you are, Titches. What about that, Nettie? Ain't this a birthday worth remembering? But no one's turned up. Oh, yes, well, I was coming to that. Um, as it happens, the Piwaka Waka Shearers and Shepherd Social Club is stuck for somewhere to hold their annual barn dance, and uh, I've taken the liberty of saying they could have it here. Have it here? Yes. I'm well, begging your pardon, Your Honour, but might an humble scarecrow be asking when they're likely to arrive? Well, right now. <laughs>
Poor old words on the back of that there sausage sandwich. Why? Didn't you get anything to eat? No, I didn't. I've been pushing and shoving and grabbing and I still didn't get nothing. Yeah, I tell you what. How about swapping a bit of this here yummy Christmas cake for a bite of that there sausage sandwich? We've got something much better. What? Tomorrow. <laughs> Hello, Ben. I thought I'd find you three down here. Here, how about giving me one of them there creamy cakes like what you promised me? You don't want that. We've prepared you a special picnic. It's in the basket. Mouldy old Christmas cake, raw potatoes, dirty carrots and sheep dip. Yeah, well, thank you very much. And old words, I don't wish to seem ungrateful. But if it's all the same to you, I'd rather have a sticky bun or three or a sup of that there lemonade. We haven't got enough to share. It's either that or nothing. Ah! Creamy cakes, custard tarts, and lemonade too. <laughs> Dang me if you ain't been pulling old Wurzel's leg. That's just to show that you have got friends. Lots more than you think. Thank <laughs> you. 